Hi, thanks for tuning in. This is my first video for my blog at www.everydayvampire.com. I started my blog in order to bring awareness to my genetic disorder. Well, okay, who am I? I'm a 30-something mother of two and I'm a sometimes bodybuilder, um, kind of a model, and a pretty crap actor. <laughs> And I have acute intermittent porphyria, or AIP. So what is AIP? Well, it's kind of a tricky thing to ask, but we'll give it a shot. AIP is a disorder of the liver that causes a deficiency in enzymes. Well, these enzymes are used in the creation of heme, heme being hemoglobin, and thus red blood cells. So why is that a problem? <laughs> well. As with most disorders, there's lots of different aspects to the problem. So I'll start with a crash course in hematology. Your blood is basically made up of four parts, red blood cells, white blood cells, plasma, and platelets. There are different parts of your body that are active during the creation of blood, your kidneys, your spleen, your liver, and your bone marrow. Your liver is responsible for excreting an enzyme that utilizes iron in the creation of blood. In somebody with AIP, your liver only excretes about half of what's necessary. So what happens? Well, lots of unpleasant things can happen and cause some interesting and bizarre issues. Um, but let's continue on with the course in hematology. When red blood cells are created by somebody with AIP, they're weak. The enzyme in question is used in the oxygen carrying part of a red blood cell and the lack thereof creates blood cells that just kind of splice and fall apart. This causes a flood of debris around your system. In somebody with a normal amount of enzyme, those enzymes would simply take care of it, recycling the debris and excreting any of the waste. In somebody with AIP, the debris simply cycles around your system while your liver attempts to make more of the enzyme that you need the excess debris gets stuck as it cycles around your system and really anywhere blood flows, your skin, your nerve endings, your lymph nodes, really, pretty much everywhere, even your ocular nerve. <laughs> uh, so what ends up happening? Well, lots of crazy symptoms really, but um, the diagnosis for AIP is such a difficult one because it can cause so many issues that mimic so many other things. Wikipedia lists the symptoms as such. You have to bear with me, this is quite a mouthful. Severe and poorly localized abdominal pain is a very common symptom in somebody with AIP. Up to 95% of people experience it. Urinary signs and symptoms such as painful urination, urinary retention, urinary incontinence, and dark urine have also been known to occur. Psy psychiatric signs and symptoms of AIP may manifest as anxiety, Paranoia, irritability, aggression, obsessions, delusions, hallucinations, confusion, depression, and suicidal thoughts. Signs that suggest increased activity of the sympathetic nervous system may also be evident, including, including tachycardia, hypertension, palpitations, orthostatic hypotension, sweating, restlessness, and tremors. Other neurological signs and symptoms of AIP include seizures, peripheral neuropathy, abnormal sensations, chest pain, leg pain, back pain, or headache, and even coma. Nausea, vomiting, constipation, and diarrhea can also occur. Proximal muscle weakness, typically beginning in the arms, is characteristic. There can be muscle pain, tingling, numbness, weakness, or even paralysis. Muscle weakness seen in AIP can progress to include the muscles of breathing, causing respiratory failure, and can be fatal. Personally for me, AIP presented in a few different ways. Um, severe anxiety, uh, racing thoughts, memory disruptions, nerve disruption in my back, nausea, insomnia, abdominal pains, leg pains, palpitations, chest pain, and tachycardia. So you can see why it's kind of a difficult disorder to diagnose. So how do you end up with AIP? Well, you can look to your parents. It's an inherited disorder from one or both of them. AIP is autosomal dominant, meaning you have to you have a 50/50 chance of receiving the defective set of genetics. I can thank my dad. <laughs> 
but you can't really be too hard on, on your parents. Um, sometimes they don't even know they have it. Most people who have AIP go their entire life without a single sign or symptom. Aren't they lucky? Now, AIP has to be triggered. Um, so what are the triggers? Well, it can kind of vary from person to person, but stress, alcohol, hormones, weight loss, a low-carb diet, surgery, and infections can all cause uh, your AIP to be triggered. So how did I trigger my AIP? Well, unfortunately, I triggered mine through an attempt to become healthier through a diet that was caloric restricted and lots of cardio combined with a period of extreme stress uh, and not much sleep and female hormones from breastfeeding my children, I managed to trigger mine. So hopefully that little bit has helped you understand AIP. If you have any questions, please leave them down below and I'll do my best to answer them. If you're looking for any resources, I can also post a few. Over my next couple of blog posts, I will cover things like my treatments, my daily life with AIP. Thanks for watching and I will catch you next time.